You're watching Apostolic Radio Charlotte. Money, they left town. And so the folks of us who are here, we're just home folks, and we're, we're, we have to encourage one another. <laughs> Amen. Uh, hope you had a great Thanksgiving week. Uh, there's no reason not to, I, I suppose. And uh, we're glad that you are all here today. First Peter 5. This is, I will remind you, Paul exhorting the elders. He is closing his letter to the church by speaking specifically to the elders. Verse number one, the elders which are among you, I exhort who am also an elder and a witness to the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Now drop down for time's sake to verse number six. Humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God. Somebody say yes. yes. And he that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Amen. Before you're seated, smile at your neighbor and say, man, you look like you've lost weight. <laughs> now, if you want to be mean, look back at him and say, psych. <laughs> Amen. God bless you all. You may be seated. Man, it's a quiet bunch we have here today. I don't know. Maybe we should have served coffee in the pre-service or something. Uh, I would like to point out to all of our wonderful ladies that uh, the church was 71 degrees when you came in this morning. And now you're probably a little warm. But it has been too cold because of the various changes. I promise you, at the moment, I am sweating. And so if you're happy, then we're all happy. So uh, I, I would like to remind you of something you already know, but we often forget. If I were to ask you to explain health to me, um, you probably would explain it as the absence of sickness. If I say explain, explain health, your first answer is going to be, well, I'm not sick or somebody who is not sick. And although this is true, it misses a very important point that will help us understand uh, something important uh, today. Health is not simply the ab absence of sickness. Health is when your body can make the correct response. Sickness is part of life. Your body is continually assaulted by many, many millions of germs um, infections, uh, bacteria, uh, viruses on a daily basis. There is no life where the person is without uh, infections. Uh, life is full of infections. Life is full of bacteria. In fact, if you uh, would put yourself in a one of those those uh, protected I can't remember the term off the top of my head, uh, where the, uh, uh, children without an immune system, they put them in this, this contained environment. It's a sealed uh, environment. If you would put yourself there over time where you had no infections, no bacteria, no viruses, over time your body would become less healthy. Isn't that amazing? It would not become more healthy with the absence of these infections. It would become less healthy. And pretty soon our immune systems would become confused. And pretty soon, uh, there would develop other problems uh, that are a, a result of our immune system not having um, exposure to, to an, uh, an environment of threats. Uh, we don't think of it this way. Uh, you know, in World War I, there was more loss of life in the trenches due to sickness than there was to enemy uh, fire. Uh, due to bullets or artillery or cannons, uh, there was more death to sickness. And the death primarily centered among those who had been raised in um, wholesome environments. Believe it or not, people who had grown up somewhat isolated on a farm uh, or in the country were much more prone to die in the sicknesses that ravaged those trenches than those who had been raised in the city and thus exposed to many, many infections. Um, when the new world was discovered, uh, the sicknesses of the old world, where there had been much more trade, much more cross-contamination, I guess would be a word you could use, 
um, it struck the New World and literally killed 90% of the inhabitants, uh, the native, the, the, the real Native Americans, not the Tea Party, <laughs> the real Native Americans, <laughs> uh, struck them and uh, killed 90% of them. And we in, inhabited, we came and possessed an emptied continent. Um, it's it's a, a tragedy, yes. Was it intentional? No. Uh, did it happen? Yes. Um, and so I want to use that as an example to you today of how <clears throat> health is not simply, health is not simply the uh, infection or the absence of infections. Health is your body day after day making correct responses to those infections. I believe it's true in our spiritual walk with God also. Excuse me. <coughs> Spiritual health is not simply avoiding temptation. Spiritual health is not simply uh, avoiding uh, uh, offense. Spiritual health is not simply avoiding um, someone hurting your feelings or offending your sensibilities. Spiritual health, real spiritual health, is you responding correctly to those things. Can I have an amen? Uh, Remember the scripture said, offenses must come. There's no getting out of it. There's no getting away from trouble. Trouble is a part of life. Man, man who is born of woman is a few days and full. Somebody say full. Somebody say that's me. <laughs> full of trouble. So Paul writes to the New Testament church, a church that has already begun to experience persecution. They have already begun to see trouble. They, they are not simply in the boom days where everything that moved is getting filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, they're no longer at camp meeting where Jeff Arnold's preaching them down to the altar every night. All of that is done. They're in the trouble days now. And so Paul, uh, excuse me, uh, Peter writes to the elders, and uh, he has a very, he, he wants to see the church survive. He can't fix the trouble, but he wants to see the church survive. He can't fix the persecution, but he wants the church to be healthy in the midst of persecution. Is that even possible, you might ask? Is it possible for me to be spiritually healthy in the midst of doubt? Is it spiritually possible for me to be strong in the midst of weakness? Is it possible? Not only is it possible, it's the only right way to walk. So, uh, Paul gives his uh, words to, excuse me, Peter, I've been teaching so much on Paul lately, it's like programmed, like Pavlov's dogs. You ring the bell and I say, Paul. Uh, You're not laughing at my jokes today. I'm going to quit trying. Uh, There is trouble as a part of serving God. It does not mean that anybody is against us necessarily, although there are enemies. Uh, Trouble is simply a part of the journey. How do healthy believers... How do we respond to trouble? How does healthy churches respond to trouble? Peter writes to these congregations scattered all over the, all over the region and he wants them to respond in a healthy way to the trouble. He can't fix the trouble. He cannot remove the trouble. He cannot stop the persecution. He cannot end the temptation. All he can do is show and teach and instruct how to overcome in these circumstances. And so he would say to us here in verse number 6, and there's several things here that I won't get into for time's sake. Um, In his closing words to these leaders, he says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. I would have you to, 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 to think today that one of the most Healthy responses to trouble in your life is when you can humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. The first response of a healthy believer, the first response of a healthy church is to humble itself, humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. Is the church suffering in this time particularly? Yes. Is persecution real? Yes. Do they love their family members who go astray as much as we lo- or, or are persecuted and are thusly uh, in many cases killed for their faith? Did they love them as much as we did? Uh, do ours? Yes. But they can't lose their faith over their loss. 
They can't lose their joy of salvation over the persecution. They have to persevere. And Peter would have them to humble themselves under the mighty hand of God. It's amazing to me how many people lose their faith in the middle of loss. Uh, the, the biggest surprise as a pastor, I've, I've shared this with you before. Um, for, for years, I saw the world as an, evangel- as, as an evangelist. I saw the church as an evangelist. Um, and my biggest surprise as a pastor is how many people going through a loss completely lose their faith. Um, I, I have seen so many people bury a loved one and never come to church again. I've seen so many people lose a brother, lose a parent, lose someone that was dear to them. And that's all it took. And they are angry at God. They are bitter at God. They uh, feel as though God has personally uh, offended them or let them down. This is, of course, um, uh, probably uh, we could say it and be fair. It's, it's a quite human response to, to deal with, with loss in anger. But what keeps us from being angry at God? What keeps us from being bitter at God? I would say Peter has a good formula. First, we ought to humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God. I don't know everything. I'd like that to be widely understood. You don't know everything. I'd like that to be widely understood. So our salvation when we do not know and we cannot explain and it does not make sense and we are hurting and we are uh, suffering loss and we might even be going through the anger of that loss, it is an act of faith and it is the sign of a healthy response when we can humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God. His ways are above my ways. Can I have an amen? His thoughts are above my thoughts. Therefore, I am going to humble myself. Job said it best in this, in this great trial where he loses everything. Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. And the Bible says, in all this, Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. Did you hear that scripture? That's a powerful scripture. For any of us who want to be a healthy believer, we want to respond to trouble in a healthy manner. In all of this, Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. This shows a healthy response. When we humble ourselves, it means we, we, we trust God. We do not understand, but we trust. When we humble ourselves, it means we submit to God. We cannot explain, but we trust. We lay it at the altar. All the things we do not know, all the things we wish were different, all the things we wish we could, could, could see turn out differently, but we cannot. And so we humble ourselves. Uh, We trust God and we submit ourselves to God. A healthy response for a believer and a healthy response for a church going through tough times is to humble ourselves before the Lord and to persevere, to keep on going. He writes to them, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. There is trust in that scripture. There is submission in the scripture and there is perseverance in that scripture. Although I've been hurt, although I've suffered loss, although Although I've gone through many things, uh, I'm not going to charge God foolishly. A healthy response is to humble. A healthy response is to submit. A healthy response is to believe that in due time, God is going to bring it all into greater light. And we'll understand it better by and by, as the old song says. Verse number 7, casting all your care upon him for he careth for you casting all your care upon him for he careth for you the ability to lay it down. All the anxiety you carry in the part of your brain where you process your fears and you process your worries. The ability to take that and lay it down before Him and cast your cares. That is a healthy believer responding to trouble. We can't avoid trouble. We can't, we can't avoid, uh, the, 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 
the, the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, as the, as the poet said. Uh, we can't avoid that, but we can have a healthy response to it. And that is, I may not explain, I may not understand, but I'm not going to charge God foolishly. I'm going to humble myself. I'm going to go back to an altar and I'm going to lay my cares down before Him. A healthy response is to believe. A healthy response is to trust. A healthy response is to pray. A healthy response is to see all the many troubles that have come your way, not as personal attacks by the enemy or personal attacks by God, but to see them as part of the journey, part of the atmosphere. Everybody wants a testimony, but no one wants a test. And so, having given you a few thoughts from this passage where Peter is writing to a church that is going through tremendous trouble. If I would have had time, I would have talked a little bit about this New Testament persecution. But let me, let me point out that it was more dramatic. It was more dramatic than anything that our, uh, we, we have ever seen in our, our lives. For us, persecution is someone maybe laughing at us behind their hand or making fun of us because we strive to be people of faith. Uh, that's persecution for us. That's not persecution for them. They literally are being uh, uh, killed. They're being persecuted. They're being blamed for many things. And so let me, having placed you in this moment in Scripture, let me give you ten, ten, practical, ten practical things, if we have time uh, to get through them, uh, that I would, I would like for all of us, myself included, to be reminded of today in this life class, where our theme is that uh, we would have abundant life. We would not just make it, but we would make it with joy. We would not just overcome, but we would be more than conquerors. That we would not just survive our career and survive our duties and survive the, the troubles of our life, but that we would walk in the joy of the promises of God. Abundant life, that's the goal. Um, yeah, we can make it, but that's not much of a testimony. We want to make it with joy. Can I have an amen? Uh, we have we have troubles and trials. We have struggles, and uh, most of the stuff in our life is just stuff. It's not that big a deal. Like I'll give you an example. This week, my little girl decided to have a sleep regression, is the uh, proper word for it. She's been sleeping all night long for a while, but this week she decided to wake up every hour on the hour and have a testimony service. And so for this week, uh, my, my, I'm back to sleep deprivation. Uh, but I'm fine now. I got a full night's sleep last night, which is not an excuse for me stuttering and stammering. That's a different problem. Uh, but a lot of the stress in our life is just life. Uh, but there's more than that, and we all know it. There are tough times and great trials and storms that come against us. Let me, let me first of all remind you of a few things. Uh, pain is part of life. Pain is part of love. There's no way to have life or love without pain. If you want to remove pain, you have to remove life. If you, want to, if you want to take a chance on love, I promise you there will be times when there is pain and, and that goes along with you. And we are afraid of that. We, we fear that. And we at times resent that. But it is the other half of the, the story. Just as night follows day, pain is part of life and pain is part of love. But we should not believe, we should not grow cynical and should believe that that is all there is. That is just a small part of the journey. Uh, and we are much more wise in our responses when we understand that it's just a moment. The pain that comes is just a moment. It is not a state of being. Uh, pain is not evil. Pain is telling you something. Leprosy is a disease where you lose the ability to sense pain. The disease doesn't destroy you. You then destroy yourself because you can't feel what is damaging your body. Pain is not necessarily your enemy. It feels that way, but pain is a message, and it's telling us something. And believe it or not, uh, we need to fill it when we n need a message to be delivered to us. Oh, I got, I got two amens on that. God bless you, those amen corners that are helping me. The second thing I'd like you to be reminded of uh, in this journey we call life is that um, our mindset, our mindset, our way of facing uh, problems, our attitude is half the battle 
uh, in life. The manner in which we look at setbacks, the manner in which we look at trouble, the manner in which we view pain, the ma- manner in which we view loss, uh, it is half the trouble. If we expect everything to be roses all the time, uh, and we only want to wake up in the morning and be served strawberries and ice cream and then swim, swim with dolphins all day, uh, that is not a realistic expectation by any means. And if you can afford that, you are not the one percent. You are the point point one zero zero or zero 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 one percent. It's not a realistic a realistic deal. But if you can respond to your negative circumstances with a positive action and a positive worldview, you bless your own house. Mindset matters. You say, how do you know that? Well, I know people who have gone through tough times and they're miserable, bitter, and angry. And I know people who've gone through tough times and they're filled with joy and they're filled with faith and they spend their days loving the people they love and being kind to people in their life. Uh, It's no excuse. Remember the story of the the two brothers. One of them, uh, they were both grew up in horrible circumstances. This is supposedly a a true story. I, I believe it's a Zig Ziglar uh, uh, story. Um, uh, two brothers, and one of them became quite successful, a beautiful family, uh, just just an admirable life. The other one ended up in prison, and uh, a researcher, psychologist interviewed them both, and they both had the same answer. They had had a terrible upbringing. The one who had had, had so much success in his life and had lived such an admirable life, he said, given the way I was raised, how could I not make something of my life? And the other brother, the one in prison, said, given the way I was raised, how could I not end up in prison? Our mindset matters. Can I have an amen? I would like to remind you today, I'm using up my time, but I'd like to remind you today that uh, your biggest fears are imaginary. And they have a low probability of occurrence. My son's going through a, a, a fearful phase right now. He watched some something on YouTube. Um, and it was a scary, and evidently in this, he tried to explain it to me, there's like these clowns or something that are abducting children, and it just terrified him. And um, he, he, he can't hardly, he just gone through a, a he just gone through this. And I, I've tried to explain to him, as all you parents have, that there, the, the, there are really things in life to be afraid of. And I promise you, as your father, one of my jobs is to explain to you the five things you should really be afraid of. But this is not something you should really be afraid of. This is a low probability that you'll ever be abducted by a clown. <laughs> As very low probability, son, that you'll ever be in an environment where your mom or dad would let you go be drawn away by a clown. We choke the fool out of that clown. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, you, you understand what I'm saying? But there, there are things we should be. But it's, it's not. We have fun laughing at seven-year-olds. It's not just seven-year-olds. I can keep myself up half the night thinking of things and worrying and fearing, and it's such a low probability. There's enough problems in the here and now. To dream up imaginary problems in my uh, imagination. Most of our troubles are uh, not, not, uh, will, will, uh, will never happen. And a lot of them do not even exist. Uh, if you're in tough times, if you're facing difficult circumstances, it would be good for you to try to shine the light of your own rationality upon um, that, that dark world of imaginary fears and uh, troubles. Another thing I, I'd like you to think of today, if you're living through tough times or you're going through tough times, and if you're either, it's like the old preacher said, you're either coming out of a storm uh, or you're going into a storm. You're either in a storm, coming out, or going into one, uh, so everybody can apply it to their lives. All of these experiences, even the ones you hate, they are what is growing you and maturing you and making you wise and making you strong. Uh, why? You know, we're, we're more uh, fitness obsessed in our time than we've ever been because we need to be. We have all this fine food at such a low cost and, rel- and percentage to, to our 
our, our wealth. Like, for example, I'll give you a quick example. Uh, for most of the Middle Ages, I'm talking about from, from, from as far back as, as we have any historical data, all the way up until about the 1820s, which is the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, that whole time, the, 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 the cost of the calories that would be required for a person to live every day took between uh, a, a, a half or more of a workman's daily wages and this is there's a lot of historical research in this uh, that that if you're interested in and I'll talk to you about later because I'm interested in that kind of a thing um, but but uh, now your daily caloric needs can be met uh, even in the poorest segments of our society in um, about an hour of labor uh, and and the rest is 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 your money well for for most of history most uh, the the workmen's uh, a, a workman's daily wage it would take it would take that uh, on most of his daily wage to to pay for his food just to eat and that's that's one of the reasons why we should all be reminded of how blessed we are i can go up to taco bell and for about 2 dollars and 38 cents i can get enough calories to keep myself moving along <laughs> All of the trouble, all the experience, all the setbacks, all the everything that we hate and we despise, it's not all bad. God's bringing something good out of it. Sure, bad things happen, but it is the experiences that are making us who we can be. Uh, number five, I've got to move along here. Um, it's really, really difficult to take to change situations you don't take responsibility for. So you're in a tough circumstance. You're in a tough time. You're facing uh, many, many troubles on every hand. Um, if you don't take responsibility for where you are, it is almost impossible to change anything. Uh, one of the founders of modern psychology had a theory that went like this. Uh, most people do not really want freedom. They say they want freedom, uh, but they really don't because freedom requires responsibility and most people are frightened of responsibility. So what people really want is they want the choices of an adult and the responsibility of a child. <laughs> um, Lord, help us not to be that way. Can I have an amen? We've got to look at everything in our life. We've got to take responsibility for it. We've got to take it to the Lord in prayer. We've got to be people of faith. We've got to believe that with the help of the Lord, we can change circumstances. If you feel trapped, if you feel fixed by things you can't control, uh, you're not being a person of faith. Now, you may say you're a person of faith, but being a person of faith is believing that things can be changed by the help of the Lord and by the promises of God and that things can be made better. I want to be a person of faith. How about you? Uh, and so uh, I, I would also like you to be aware today of, of the fact that um, in, in truth, the only thing you can really work on is the present. Uh, the past is kind of finished. There are circumstances where there, there might be apologies that should be made. There are circumstances where there should be um, rights that should be made because of wrongs that were committed. Um, but as far as the, the great majority of our life, all we can deal with is the present. Uh, there's troubles sufficient for the day right in the middle of the day. Uh, but that's not how many of us live. Many of us live as though uh, we're, we're progressing toward some ideal that requires the sacrifice of the present. In other words, we live as though the destination is more important than the journey. Now, I'm not talking about heaven. Uh, that is a different issue. But believe it or not, the, the, the probability of future heaven is best dealt with in the present, not in the future. What do people do when they always put off getting right with God? They're, they're always dealing with the prospects of eternal life in the future. That's not how you do it. You do it right here in the present. Uh, if you want your, if you want to be a better parent, uh, you need to do something today. If you want to be a better husband or wife, you need to do something today. If you want to, if you want to have a more joyful home, do something today. Don't, 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 don't always look. Yeah, trouble may be real. Yeah, but there's a way to respond to trouble. I'm surfing coffee here in a little while. I promise you I am. Uh, 
Another thing I'd like you to all be aware of on this holiday Sunday morning is there's always something to be thankful for. Always, 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 always something to be thankful for. I can't stop your trouble and you can't stop my trouble. I can't stop the storm. You can't stop the storm. But we can be healthy believers. We can respond to it with a healthy response. That's what I'm trying to to share with with us today. There's always something to be thankful for. Uh, Life is better when you've got a smile to go along with everything else. Uh, Your circumstances are better when you can be positive in the face of all the uh, adversities. Uh, God's been good to us. We may not have everything we might wish because wishing is a trap whereby we deceive ourselves thinking that happiness is in the wishing well. Happiness is never in the wishing well. The moment you pull out of the wishing well something you wished for, the well is not empty. You just transfer more wishes to that well. Happiness is not in the wishing well. Happiness is in the realm where we take action. We make a difference. We do something now. We make a change. That is where it is found. There's always something to be thankful for. Another thing I'd like you to be aware of, and all this stuff is stuff you know. I'm not introducing new things to any of you today. I'm just giving some practical, practical truths whereby we can respond to trouble. We can respond to setback. We can respond to disappointment, hurt, loss. We can be healthy. Health is the correct response to infection. The correct response to injury. No doctor can give your, you health. The doctors, all they do is try to get your body to do what it's supposed to do. But if they cannot get your body to do what it's supposed to do, there is no health anywhere in a bottle that they can give to you. They've got to get your body. So it is for the believer. So it is for the Christian. You have to get centered in your faith. You have to get strong in your spiritual confidence. A preacher can't make you spiritual. A church can't make good decisions for you. All we can do is try to get you back to the power of faith in your life. Uh, great things take time to accomplish. Uh, great, great works take time to come to fulfillment. Uh, patience is real. Patience is necessary. Uh, if you're trying to accomplish something in your life, something in your walk, uh, patience is necessary. Uh, it is part of the journey. It is part of the story. Can I have a big amen? Uh, Healthy responses. Uh, Number nine, uh, other people cannot validate you. And one of the greatest illusions of life, one of the greatest uh, formulas, I'm going to do a series, I'm going to do a series sometime uh, on on maybe in life class, sometime maybe next year, and I'm going to talk about uh, 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 sure-fired ways for you to be miserable. (laughs) Because we we all see it played out over and over. Um, uh, It's nice when other people like you. Can I have an amen? It's nice when other people approve of you. But I'm telling you, one of the great errors and snares is when you live your life needing and believing that it comes from other people. They cannot validate you. Uh, You can live your whole life trying to impress Uh, but if you impress them too much, they won't love you more for it. They'll secretly begin to be jealous. And they'll get tired of you always pasting on Facebook about how amazing your life is. That's what Facebook is. It's become an artificial status competition. My life is more amazing than your life. Moving along. Healthy responses to trouble. And this is, I'm, I'm done after this. I would like you to be reminded that no matter what you're going through, no matter what struggle, disappointment, etc., etc., you are not alone. You are never alone. Sure, your best friend may not understand at the moment or ever. Sure, your family members may not see and comprehend at the moment or ever, but you still are not alone. You say, I feel alone. That doesn't mean you're alone. You say, it seems like I'm alone. No, you are not alone. There is one who said he would be with you always. 
Some of you have gone through things you can't even talk about. It's not even that it's just simply embarrassing. It's that it's inappropriate. You just don't have, and unless you have some type of professional uh, circumstances where you're getting professional help, it's just, it's just inappropriate for you to talk about it in, in 99% of the relationships that you have. And you feel alone. I want you to know you are not alone. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He will be with you always, even until the end of the age. He was in all points tempted like as you are, yet without sin. He's more than your friend. He's your solution. There's nobody like Jesus. And so in the storm, I'd like you to lift up your eyes and see Jesus walking to you across the top of the waves. Let's all stand. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. I'm going to start service here in a few moments. I think it's too warm in here. I think that's, that's the problem. It's too warm, and people are like, uh, amen. Smile at your neighbor, shake their hand. We're going to start our worship and praise service here shortly, and uh, we're going to have a great time, and I won't keep you from your nap too long, I promise. Thank you for watching Apostolic Radio Charlotte.